Hello and welcome to Snowy Peaks Math 8. Uh, this is going to be uh, the first video for the course. Um, and this first unit, um, we're going to be called Input and Output Relations. And the first thing that we want to do in Section 1 is we're going to graph on the coordinate plane. Okay, so we want to identify and graph points in the coordinate plane, describing their relationship to axes and quadrants. And then we want to create graphs from a table or situation and use them to solve problems. So um, the first thing that we've got here is some vocabulary, all right? Um, and so when you have a graph, okay, here's your graph right here. Um, it's comprised of an x-axis and a y-axis. Now, your x-axis is horizontal here, okay? And your y-axis, your vertical axis, is here, all right? Um, and so you have uh, x-coordinates and y-coordinates. So x-coordinates is the position, your location along the x-axis. Your y-coordinate is your position along the y-axis, okay? Um, and, you're, and when you combine both of these coordinates together, you get a point, okay? So these here create points, okay? And each of those points are going to be in a quadrant, okay? You're either going to have quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, or quadrant four, okay? Um, and the origin uh, is right here at zero, zero. Okay, now before we move on and start plotting points, um, I want to talk about something. I want to talk about um, when you look at this x-axis here, okay, and let's zoom in on the graph. What I notice here is that your x value here is positive. Okay, now if you're anywhere from the origin over to this side, your x value is going to be positive. If you take a look at your origin and you go to the left, then your x value is going to be negative. Okay, similarly up here with your y axis, okay, if you go up from here, start at origin, you go up, your y values are going to be positive. Okay, and if you go down from your origin, your y values are going to be negative. So what we have here is we have all these different points, and your points are, are here in the form of x comma y, okay? Um, so the values that are in this quadrant means that your x value and your, and your y value are going to be positive. Over here in the left side, okay, in quadrant 2, um, in this part here, your x values, you know, if you start here and you go to the left, your x values are negative, and your y values are positive. So you have negative x values and you have positive y values. Okay. Um, down in the quadrant three, you have uh, negative x values and you have negative y values. All right. Uh, over in quadrant four, you've got positive x values and you have negative y values. Okay. So that's always going to be the case. All right. So sometimes, you know, a lot of people will. Um, you know, just kind of remember this. Otherwise, you know, we have some steps to go through that'll show you how to do this. And what these steps say is um, you want to start at the origin, okay? Move to the right if your x coordinate is positive, move left if your x coordinate is negative. From there, you move up if the y coordinate is positive or down if the y coordinate is negative. And then step three, you just plot the point, okay? So let's go ahead and practice that over here. Uh, it's easy just to, easiest just to kind of do this. Um, so let's come over here, um, and I, we, we want to plot and label these points A, B, and C, okay? Now, this one over here, um, 1 and 1 half, and then negative 3 and 3 fourths. So this translates to the point, uh, if you struggle with fractions, you know, this is the point 1.5, comma, negative 3.75, okay? Now, when I have this point here, I'm going to plot point A, okay? Um, in When I look at this point here, what I see is that this number here is my x value, and then this number to the over here, 3.75, negative 3.75, is my y value, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot point A. Now, I'm going to come over here to this graph, and I'm going to start at the origin, at 0, 0. Now, what I have is I have 1.5 on my x value. That means that I'm going to start here, and I'm going to move over 1.5 to right here, okay? 
And so you can kind of uh, draw this little grid here, okay? That's 1.5 to the right. Then what I have is I have negative 3.75, and this is going to go down. So 1, 2, 3, and then 3.75 is between 3 and 4. It's closer to 4, but it's going to be right about here. All right, so what we would do is we would plot this point right about here. This point here is the location for point A. And that's what I do. And that's all that is. Okay, so when I have this point, 1 and 1 half and negative 3 and 3 fourths, all that tells me is it tells me the location of point A. Okay, all right, let's take a look at point B. Now you have the point 0, 6. So 0 is my x value, 6 is my y value. So if I have an x value of 0, that means I'm just going to stay at my origin. Okay, and then a y value of 6 means that I move up 6 units. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I'm going to plot a point here, and I'm going to call this point B. Okay, and that's the location for point B. All right, point C, the last one, negative 3.75 and negative 4.25. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at my origin. I'm going to go over negative 3.75, so 1, 2, 3.75, right about here, and then down 4.25, all right? So I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4.25. So right there is my location for point C, okay? Roughly speaking, we'll call that point C, okay? And so that's it, all right? So when we're talking about a point, all right, and let's come up here. I want to make sure we talk about this. A point is a location on a graph. All right, and that's it. All right, I want to make sure that we understand what a point is before we start plotting these things and moving on. All right, so now, you know, let's think of a real-world example, okay? Um, and what I want to do is complete this table. So, um, Ice skating costs $7 for the first hour, okay, and then $5 for each additional hour. Uh, and we want to complete the table to show the total cost of ice skating for two, three, four, and five hours. So two, three, four, and five hours. So if I have two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, okay, what I have is I'm comparing two things. Okay, I'm taking the number of hours and determining what the total cost is based on how many hours we're ice skating. Okay, so for two hours, uh, it says seven dollars for the first hour. So at hour one, okay, hour one, that's going to give us um, you know seven dollars. Okay, now for each additional hour beyond the first hour. We're going to go start at 7, and then we're going to go up by $5. So what I have here, um, you know, if, I, if hour 1 gives me $7, then after 2, I'm going to add 5 to that, and that's going to give me $12, okay? And then for each additional hour after that, I'm just going to keep adding $5 on, okay? So after 3 hours, okay, um, I have 17, okay? After 4 hours... I have 22. And after five hours, I've got 27. Okay? And so that is my situation here. Okay? And so we're comparing two things. Now, number of hours, think of this like your point. This is an x coordinate, and these are your y coordinates. Okay? And it always goes in that direction. Okay? Starting with x in your left column, y is in your right column. So X is your number of hours, Y is your total cost. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and notice how that's already kind of done for you on this graph. Notice how hours, okay, your label for hours is on your X axis. Notice how your total cost is labeled on your Y axis. So what you can do if you want to figure out, hey, which one of these values is what, you can always take a look over at your graph, okay? All right, so let's do this. All right, so I'm going to plot these points. Now, when I take um, 
each of these um, you know, values here, this becomes points. So when I have the column 2, 12, this represents a point x, y. So I'm going to plot that point over here, and I'm going to plot the point 2, comma, 12. Okay? The next point I'm going to plot is 3, 17. Okay? 17's not, you know, it's in between 15 and 18 over here. Uh, point 4 is going to be 22. All right, so 4, 22, and then 5, 27. I did the highlighter instead of the pen. Okay, 5, 27. Okay, and these are my points. Now, what this represents is a situation. Okay, if I'm ice skating, it costs me $7 for the first hour and then $5 for each additional hour. Okay, this graph tells me how much I'm going to pay. This table also tells me what I'm going to pay. So, you know, the reality is, is that tables and graphs, they mean the same thing. Okay? Okay, so these are the, it's the same idea, but it's just different representations. So different representations. Okay. And that's the idea. Okay, so we can take, you know, you can just go ahead and plot points normally on a graph, but we have to also make that connection to the real world and understand that, you know, we can take a real world situation and we can create points and model that on a graph. So, all right, let's take a look at the next page. Okay, on this part of the video, uh, we want to, we have two more questions on this page. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be analyzing a graphical representation of data. Okay, and so I'm going to look at this graph, and I'm going to conclude a couple things from this graph. The first thing I want to understand is, well, what is my x-axis and what is my y-axis? And so the first thing that I do is I label those, okay, and I'm going to say that X represents hours, Y represents uh, inches of rainfall, okay. Now, what I can see from here is that... Um, you know, and, and, I, and I got inches of rainfall because of the label up here. All right, so uh, my x-axis is number of hours, y-axis is total inches, and what I want to do is I want to talk about, you know, the points. Okay, so at one hour, and I'm going to create a table here. Okay, so I'm going to do hours and then inches. All right, so I've got one hour... Um, two hours, three hours, four hours. All right. So hours one, two, three, and four. So after one hour, okay, I have, it has rained a total of 0.5 inches. Okay. Uh, after two hours, it has rained one inch. Okay. And then um, at three hours, it's rained two inches, and after four hours, it's only rained two inches. So what you have to do now is sit here and say, okay, what do these numbers mean? What was happening with those numbers? Okay, and what I know is this. Um, it rained between one and two hours. Uh, between zero and two hours, it rained, you know. Uh, but this is a constant rate of change, okay, where I have 0.5 going up to 1. All right, notice how, you know, we, every hour you add half an inch of rain. All of a sudden, between hours 2 and 3, it jumped up, and it rained a lot between hours 2 and 3. But then, notice how the amount of rain doesn't change between hours 3 and 4, okay? So here's what we know, uh, and here's the conclusion that we need to draw, okay? Um, so the conclusion is, um, is that it, it's rained steadily between hours 0, 1, and 2, okay? So it rained, so steady rain for 
from hours zero to two. And then, uh, then you had um, a lot of rain or more rain from hours two to three, okay? And then it stopped raining at hour three. Okay, and, and the reason why I know that, okay, and you have to just kind of look at this graph and draw conclusions, okay, um, you know, after what, you know, between, you know, it didn't have anything for zeros, you know, hour zero, but between hours zero and two, you had steady rain, okay, all of a sudden, you had more rain between hours two and three, because at hour three, you had a lot more, and then all of a sudden, between hours three and four, it didn't change, so it must have stopped raining, at hour three because it's not going up anymore, okay? So this is something that you guys need to be able to do, okay? You need to be able to, um, you know, look at a graph and answer some questions about what's going on, okay? And it's pretty important that we're able to do that, all right? Um, let's take a look at the last question, okay? And what we're going to do is we're, we're going to be comparing um, different sets of data, okay? Okay. Um, and so what I have here is I have a table for athlete A, and I have a table for athlete B. Now, in both of these, you have the number of, uh, of days that uh, the athletes are training, and then you have the number of miles, okay? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to say that X represents days, and Y represents miles. And this must be how f much they're training or, or whatever. Now, for me, I personally like to see uh, the tables. Uh, the graphs help me too. But because athlete A is already in a table, uh, well, we, don't, we can do kind of whatever we want. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put athlete A in blue, okay? Uh, and I'm going to put him, uh, put that athlete in blue, uh, and I'm going to plot these points on this graph over here so we can get a graphical representation of what's going on. So after the number of days, uh, athlete A went 15.5 miles. Now, roughly speaking, uh, this is pretty close, you know, probably maybe closer to half, like, like 10. So maybe I'll put athlete A a little bit above athlete B. Um, and then athlete B... Um, or I'm sorry, athlete A, after two days, had gone 35 miles. So after two days, gone 35 miles, that's going to be a little bit above that one. Okay. Um, athlete On day three, um, athlete B went 55 miles, which is probably a little bit higher than athlete B. Um, so I'm going to come up here and plot that point here. Okay, and then on day four, okay, they had gone a total of 80 miles. Okay, now what we realize here, you know, what conclusions, um, you know, can we draw from this? So let's, you know, think about the conclusion that we can draw. All right, so the conclusion is this, all right. Um, for days one through three, athlete A had more miles, but by day four, athlete B had more miles, okay? And so the moral of the story, guys, is that, you know, the point of this, the point of this section is to read tables and graphs, okay? And what we really want you to do is to tell that story of what's going on, okay? So, um, you know, let's go ahead and get started on your edgenuity work, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.